Welcome back, folks, to more Edna and Harvey. Harvey's new eyes. We've seen Harvey's new eyes, and they're red and evil. Look for secret doors. She already knew of two other ways into Garrett's secret room. Why do we have to stand around here again? We're supposed to stop that child from escaping its therapy with violence, if possible. Do you still have your taser? Of course. On the other hand, Garrett had rarely been wrong. Lily would try it his way. I got about a torch. Hello, Lily. You're not going to play with fire, are you? Of course you don't want that. You know that Mother Superior has forbidden it. Fuck Mother Superior. Something weird was happening here. Um. Well done, Lily. I've heard everything I wanted to hear. Mother Superior's obviously gone gaga. I'd already suspected that. Now hurry. Come to me in the secret room. There's a hidden door in the dark corner in front of the office. Right next to the fireplace outside. Yes. Oh, damn. Of course you can't make any light. You're not allowed to play with fire. I'd completely forgotten about that. One moment. Let me think. Hmm. I think I have an idea. There isn't any way to break through a block created by hypnosis. Unless you get hypnotized again. It's risky. But you could put yourself in a trance and fight the block directly in your own subconscious. But be warned, the world inside of a trance is an eerie place. It's like a parallel universe that only exists in your mind. Traversing it without the guidance of a trained hypnotist has its dangers. And the blocks created by the doctor will probably appear as powerful demons that you can only defeat in a mental duel. Did you understand all that? Uh-uh. You don't have to. Not yet. Just use the stuffed rabbit to hypnotize yourself. Once you're in a trance, Look for the inner demon that's preventing you from making a fire, and destroy him! The funny rabbit with the glowing eyes was sitting indifferently on the chair. Maybe Lily would be allowed to play with him for a while. With the, the rabbit's fuck? Help, Lily had returned into a trance. At first glance, everything had seemed unfamiliar and strange. Completely alone, she cowered inside a cold cave that was illuminated by the giant, suspicious eye of Mother Superior. So there really wasn't much difference to reality. Mother Superior closed her tearing eye. Lily could move unobserved for now. That's right, bitch! Ah, my eye's burning! Lily had enough ribs. They were easy to count, but Mother Superior had forbidden it because it ruined her appetite. After dealing with the curtain, Mother Superior had apparently taken her contact lenses out. Strange. 
In the real world, Mother Superior wore glasses. But in the real world, Mother Superior wasn't 50 feet tall either, so it was probably fine. Wasn't actually allowed to play with fire. Now do something, Lily. Take off my hat. Take it off. Thanks, Lily. You saved me. Now you see the damage that fire can do. It's best not to touch it. <sighs> Lily was a little contrite. Apparently, the snowman hadn't learned anything. Fucking snowman. No. Lily had put out the fire, just like the snowman had told her to. Hopefully, he now realized that there were quite appropriate situations where one could play with fire. Congratulations! Lily has acquired a new skill. She can now get around the ban on playing with fire. All she has to do is cancel it in her new Don'ts menu by clicking on it with the left mouse button. Keep this option in mind. Throughout the game, Lily will learn to bypass many other restraints using this technique. But keep in mind that only one ban can be revoked at a time. Now I can make fire! <laughs> With the help of the torch, Lily could finally inspect the mysterious bracket. What a surprise! It was a torch bracket, but there was still no trace of the promised secret passage. <laughs> There had to be a secret passage there somewhere. There had There had to It was true. A secret passage. Garrett was right once again. Garrett's not such a dick licker after all! Lily, you did it! Perfect! I think you're finally ready to know the truth. Well, where should I start? You... Maybe I should introduce myself first. My full name is Chief Deputy Garrett Gordon Gardengor. I'm an undercover investigator for the juvenile department. I took a position in the convent as a cover to observe Mother Superior. My assignment is to uncover evidence proving her educational methods violate youth protection laws. But Dr. Marcel is an even bigger fish to fry. Compared to him, Mother Superior is a saint. Lily could hardly believe what she was hearing. But now it all made sense. The secret room. 
the listening devices, and the strained voices she kept hearing at night. It was all coming together to form a coherent, overall picture. Ah, ah, ah. Before you ask me any questions, let me quickly tell you one more thing about the hypnosis. This Harvey hypnosis is the doctor's devilish invention. He apparently uses this stuffed rabbit to force his will on you. If we want to get out of here, then you're going to have to fight the behavioral rules he's installed inside you. You can also take on the other behavior blocks, just like you did the one stopping you from playing with fire. But it means you'll have to put yourself back in a trance. The first challenge will be leaving the school grounds. Mother Superior has forbidden you from doing this. And because of the behavior block, you're incapable of being disobedient. The solution is to once again fight the block while you're in a trance. We have to tackle the problem at its source. No. Let me finish. As I said, Dr. Marcel is a much bigger fish. The police has been after him for a while. He's suspected of using illegal therapy methods that rob children of their childhood. And the hypnosis he subjected you to confirms this suspicion. Call. Call the police? Ha! Lily, I am the police. I can help you and get you to safety. We just have to get off the school grounds somehow. I think the best way is to follow in your friend Edna's footsteps. But first, I want to answer any questions you have. So? No questions? Uh-uh. How disappointing. Oh well, okay. Let's go to the tree swing! Actually, the ball of wool should have stayed in the treasure chest for all eternity as a symbol of friendship. But Lily was running out of options. Hello, Lily. You're not trying to leave the school grounds, are you? You know that Mother Superior has forbidden it. And you do know... You must not contradict the doll. It's possible to have lots of fun without defying the rules set by adults. We could sort your marbles according to colors. Or come up with a counting rhyme for folding laundry. No matter how tempting the funny rabbit suggestions were, Lily had to get through the fence and find Edna. What do you have there? Can I see it? Uh-huh. Woo! -hoo -hoo. A ball of wool! Yippee! But that's... that's... With the rabbit's help, Lily had returned into a trance. In the distance, she could see the giant Mother Superior stomping around in front of her cave. And over the reality had been a huge gap in the fence, there was now a cobweb with a giant spider in the center. This had to be the second demon for her to defeat. In Lord! Lily had enough ribs. They were easy to count, but Mother Superior had forbidden it because it ruined her appetite. Lily was curious whether this would have any effect. Alright! When Lily saw how Mother Superior took the spider in her arms, her heart melted. Suddenly, Mother Superior no longer seemed so big and grown up. She emerged from her trance with a blissful smile on her lips. <sighs> Look at all my balls and 
suck my dick. Lily had overcome her second behavioral block. She might still only have been able to ignore one rule, but it was better than nothing. Chapter 2, Edna's Hideout. It was already dusk when Lily set off down the convent hill. Meet you at the crossroads. Time. Um. Save it. Save it. There's a time for words and a time for action. And there's a third time. The time for sitting at the police station and filling out forms. And that time has come. Shit. What now? Ah, don't say anything. Shit what balls. Your girlfriend? What's her name? Oh, uh, Edna, right? Uh-huh. <sighs> I could tell right away that that girl meant overtime. But if she's still alive, I'll probably have to take care of this too. Although I think it's much more likely that Dr. Marcel has already found her and used a wood chipper to turn her into pig feet. If that's the case, I'll find that out too. So don't worry about your little girlfriend anymore. <sighs> Why do I always have to be so damn compassionate? It's a curse. Oh well. Wait here while I investigate a few things. I'll watch the path to the institution. Maybe I'll learn something that way. If I discover anything, I'll give you a signal. I'll make an owl call. Ooh. Ooh. Or something like that. You won't miss it. Wait here for me. I'm sure it will only take a few hours. Um. <sighs> Lily was immensely relieved that Edna's fate was now in the hands of this exceptionally competent youth investigator. However, she would have liked to have shown him the map with the directions to Edna's hiding place. But Garrett had already disappeared. Lily risked a glance at the map. She could see more lake from here. Edna's hiding place couldn't be that far. You're not planning on running into the moor after dark, are you? Don't you know how dangerous that is? You must not hang around dangerous places. There are so many other nice places for children to- Chuck E. Cheese! The Agricultural Museum, for example. Or the job information center at the employment office. Or Michael Jackson's mansion. He's starting to think that the funny stuff rabbit. It's pretty safe now. <laughs> she stubbornly risked another look at the map. How about a Catholic church? You must not hang around dangerous places. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sure you are, you blue little didn't son of a want bitch. To you. We're friends, after all. And friends don't play pranks on each other. No. No. Lily arrived just in time to see the flying topography tool disappear through a grilled window. Great. That must be the police car. Chili peppers, red hot. Pump. Check.
The map lay out of reach. Hmm. I need to get drunk. Uh. Wow, what? Oh. oh, just a little girl. What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? Aren't you worried that the loonies will catch you? Uh-uh. Well, you should be. So hurry, get back to bed. Or did you want to make a complaint? Uh-huh. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, this had to happen someday. And who do you want to make a complaint about, if I may ask? Uh-huh. You don't mean yourself, do you? Uh-huh. Ha-ha! <laughs> Police! What terrible things could a little girl like you have done? Children your age can't even be charged with a crime. The only reason to lock up a young kid like you would be to sober you up. But I'm sure a girl who looks as well behaved as you already knows to stay away from alcohol, right? Uh-huh. You see? Of course, if you insist, you can take a voluntary alcohol test anyway. The machine is over there, against the wall. But I can't arrest you if you haven't gone and drunk nothing. Fuck you. Takes me to get drunk. What do we have here? A little girl, without parents, all alone in the night. How sweet. What brings you into this dark dive where no one can hear you scream? Alcohol. I can't serve children alcohol. I'm missing the recipe for the only alcoholic cocktail on the menu, the Volcano Berserker. Plus, I ran out of the ingredients. So, if you want a drink, you'll have to get me the right ingredients. And then, the drinks will be free. Sweet. Here, the menu. The menu. Cocktail menu. Cock and balls in your mouth. The Volcano Berserker! A Volcano Berserker? Hmm. Sorry about that, sweetie. Unfortunately, I don't have the recipe. The previous owner took it. Or wherever. But they haven't found him yet, and they won't. Not where they're looking. Interesting. I think you fucking killed him. Now I'm taking your sign, bitch. To use the machine... You needed small change and flounder to go. How convenient. To use the machine, you needed small change and a comfortable relationship with Salmonella. I have that. Wait. No! This isn't Aunt Gorgula. My name is Miranya. Miranya the Medium. How many more times do I have to tell you? What? But that's... One moment. Please stay on the line. Sorry, little girl. This could take a moment. It's that bartender, Max Mixo, again. A real pain in the ass. So dead, and yet so talkative. Come to think of it, the spirits are very unsettled today. They're all talking over each other. If only I had earplugs. What was that? Now listen to me, my dear lady. I'm not a greeting card courier. I'm sure that... Max Mixo, would you please shut up for a moment? Because there are others who... Who? No, I don't know anyone called Priscilla. Maranya was busy. Lily could completely understand that. She knew how hard it was to ignore spirits. Especially those that tried to grab you at night. Hmm? What? Oh. Hi, little girl. What do you have there? Are those... earplugs? Fabulous! Thank you! It's exactly what I need right now. 
Hmm. No, these are too big. So, hello? Can anyone hear me? Ah, oh, much better. Yes, loud and clear. Who wants to be first? Max Mixo? I could have guessed that. Could you possibly do me another favor? Uh-huh. It's about Max Mixo, the previous bartender at the village bar. He's worried about his legacy, the volcano berserker. He'd always hoped that this drink would make him immortal someday. We both know that his plan failed, but now he literally took the recipe to his grave, and he so wanted to leave it to posterity. It's very simple. The cocktail only has three ingredients. Wine gum, artemisia, and a chili pepper. Did you get that? Uh-huh. Thank you, Lily. Maybe the great Max Mixo can finally find peace. And me too. If you want to order anything, just point it out to me on the menu. Coming right up! Oh, by the way, that's a non-alcoholic cocktail, but don't worry, there's enough other illegal substances in it. Sweet! that Garrett had taken led Lily to a small bridge over one of the brackish creeks running off from Moore Lake. Two trustworthy looking men in white lab coats were working there. Lily wasn't quite sure what to make of them. She also recognized Garrett in the bushes on the other shoreline. Apparently, he didn't want to be seen by the two men. And although the two nocturnal workers had made a friendly impression on Lily, she decided to follow the youth investigator's lead. And, have you found anything yet? Do you have to keep asking that? I'll let you know if I discover something. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think Dr. Marcel's madness is starting to rub off on me. Ever since we found this stuffed rabbit by the lake, he's been obsessed. We should be taking care of patients instead of poking around the moor. And then there's that absurd plan with the hypnosis now. Stop already, and keep looking. Have you actually found anything yet? Well... Lily had heard enough. Apparently, the men in white were Dr. Marcel's minions. It appeared that Edna's concern had been justified. Dr. Marcel really was looking for her. It was now more important than ever to find Edna's hiding place. There was a sign on the feeding trough. Don't feed the saber-toothed boars. Saber-toothed boars are very dangerous. In the event of an encounter, make sure you don't look like a well-behaved convent schoolgirl. Saber-toothed boars are nocturnal, grow up to six feet long, and like to lurk in the shadows. They can be frequently found near the territorial herb Artemisia, since they mark their territory on the leaves of this plant. Therefore, avoid areas where this herb grows after dark. The Forest Ranger. Lily would have gladly heeded the warning, but she had no idea how to recognize Artemisia. But Lily, didn't you read the sign? You're not supposed to feed the boars. The forest ranger said so. You must not contradict adults. But luckily, you know that yourself. Fuck adults! Lily had heard that. Then how is it? Lily had heard. Then how is it? Lily had heard. Then how is it? <laughs> if the saber toothed boars had to mark their territory, then they should do it properly.
Let's get this Volcano Berserker drink mixed, mixed. A Volcano Berserker coming right up. But be careful, that drink packs a punch. And I'm not talking about punchy colada if you catch my drift. But Lily, what's that for? That's not good for little children. You must not touch alcohol. And milk is much better for your teeth anyway. <laughs> Look at my funny choppers. <laughs> They're cute, aren't they? Uh-huh. All right, folks, that wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned for more Edna and Harvey. Thanks for watching.